to another video. Today we're going to be discussing the 2020 House of Representative elections. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be filling in um, each individual um, House seat. So that's 20 House seats that are considered um, toss-ups at this point. So we have like a full filled um, House of Representatives. Um, so yeah, so let's start with our biggest districts that we can see in the map um, before we have to zoom into the smaller districts. Here in the city of New Mexico, I think this seat will narrowly go to the Democratic Party. So, New Mexico is a very rural state. It has a lot of rural parts down um, near um, the border. But I think the Democrats have such a movement in that state. Um, and I think it's very diapers. And I think this seat is currently by, by a Democrat. So, yeah. I think this seat would be tilt Democratic as it is now. Okay, for Iowa's first congressional district, or, or Iowa's third, my bad. Iowa's third, I think this one would have been a tilt Republican seat. I think they would lose narrowly in that race. Um, Iowa's gaining more of a Democratic feel in that state. Now, in the, seat, in the, in the first district, I think Finnecocker, F F F Abby Finnecocker, she would have had... Um, a slight re-election race. Um, also in the state of Iowa, I was second district. I think would have also gone to the Democratic Party. So our current composition, if everything, the Democrats already have a majority without filling um, sixteen of the congressional districts that are currently um, up for grabs. State of New Mexico. Um, I mean, of Minnesota, there is currently a Democrat who won um, here narrowly during his last election. And I think it's he has 15 terms in the House of Representatives, and um, he he would have easily won again. Um, any other big states that we can, I guess we can fill this um seat here. So this area right here is become more increasingly Democratic in the state of Illinois. That's um Illinois's 13th district, 13th district, and I think it would have gone slightly to the Democratic Party. This would be a swing, um, a pickup for the Democrats, and yeah. This district has some of the um, suburbs for St. Louis, Missouri. Has some of the suburbs um, for like the um, Springfield area of Illinois. And yeah, I think the district would have gone slightly to the Democrats. Other districts I can see. Can I fill in that one in? Joe Cunningham's district. Um, I think that's Cal um, South Carolina's first district. Nearly would have gone to the Democrats. Joe Cunningham has been um, been popular in that state. Um, yeah, and that's the Charleston area of that state so i think it would have been an easy no doubt um win for the joy cunningham he, it was going to be a hard race obviously but i think he would have at the end of the day won, won the race so i think we can fill in Maine's district the city of Maine, um a lot of the down ballot voting especially for the senate election i think the second congressional district would have gone slightly to democrats we know that there's already a democrat incumbent in that seat so, yeah, I think it would have been for the Democratic Party. Going into other districts, let's go to this district up in New York. So, yeah, Anthony Brindisi, this is um New York 22nd. This district is kind of in a weird area because it's, it's in smack middle of New York. It's not near the Syracuse, um, Buffalo area that's um, very highly populated. And it's not in the city where there's like millions of districts. It's in the more rural parts of New York. I think this seat would have stayed with the Democratic Party. It would have been close, but it would have gone to the Democratic Party slightly. Another seat here, so Oklahoma's um, 5th District, Kendra Horn. She would have had um, a difficult re-election race, but also we must consider that this district, um, it's incorporated in there, the... Um, Oklahoma City area, which is um has a lot of um African American population, and there is some still some Native Americans in this district. Kendra Horn would have kept her seat. Now I think we can't see that much anymore. Okay, yeah, this um I think this is Elaine Lurias or Abigail yeah Abigail Spanberger, um her district. I think Abigail Spanberger again. She's popular in that seat, and I think she would have held on. Oops, there you go. Let me just put that back. Yep, Abel Spanberger would have held on to her seat. Um, she is mildly popular in that seat. So yeah, the state of Pennsylvania, 
um, Scott Perry. I think, um, if I'm not wrong, this was one of the special elections, Pennsylvania's 10th. So I think the Republican Party, they would have had a little bit harder time picking it up. But I think if, if the Democrats go like the way they are, they're winning a lot of the Pennsylvania areas, they would have won this district. Now, here in the state of um, New Jersey, we saw a lot of more Democratic trends, and I think that those trends will continue. So now let's just go into our individual states where we're missing seats so we can see the smaller districts. So remember, this map only shows like big the bigger districts. So I think the first seat was California. Yeah, so for, let's wait for that. Yeah, there we go. 21st district. This um this district, okay, so right next door near here is, hold on, yeah, there we go. So this district right now is, like, it's not a, a super safe bet, um, but again, the Democrats, this is already getting into the northern part of California, onto the eastern side of California, which again, we see it's more, Dem uh, more Republican, and I think this seat, it was going to go for the Democrats slightly. Um, I'm going to change this seat right here, the 25th district of, it's open currently, but it is looking like David Garcia will win that seat, um, or I forgot his name, um, yeah, but the Republican candidate will, I think, will project that he will win that race, haven't checked poll results, but I think when it comes back to re-election, Republicans will take that back seat, um, that was Katie Hill's old seat, she was, um, very popular senator in that, in that district, I mean, Congresswoman. So let's go back to our US map. And that brings us all the way to, let's check out some other districts we're missing. The district in Texas, I think there's two there. So let's go to Texas. There we go, Texas. Yeah, so here we can see a Houston district. It's currently a Republican district, but this district is kind of getting into suburbs of, it's like the later suburbs of Houston. But also, there's a big um, rural population in this part of the state. Or is that two separate districts? That's one district. So I think this would have gone to the Democrats. I think the Houston area is trending more for the Democratic Party, and I think it would have gone to them. Same thing here in the Dallas area. And other um, Republicans, see, I think it would have flipped onto the to the Republican Party, uh, to the Democratic Party. So I think we filled all our seats in the state of Texas. Um, now let's go to the United States map to check where are our next seats we're going to look for. So United States, I think there's a couple in Georgia. There's one in Georgia or two. Let's go to the state of Georgia. Yeah, there's a couple in Georgia. So let's go to Georgia. There we go, Georgia. Oh, we passed it. Georgia, there we go. So the state of Georgia, um, there's two seats here. They're right next to each other. So it's Lucy McFadden seats and Rob Woodle. So this is Atlanta area suburbs. Um, those suburbs are growing and growing. I would say Lucy McBath, she has an interesting story. People like her in that state, and I think it would have gone to them. But the district next door, it's 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 an open seat. But I don't think the Democrats um, will be able to pull off this flip. Maybe in a couple years, but currently I think the Republicans will keep that seat. Now in the state of Florida, I think there's one district here, yeah. So, um, this district is very interesting. This is Donna Shalala's district. Um, I'm putting this district in favor of the Democrats, but I think it's interesting because I've heard they're getting some big candidates for that um, congressional seat. So, we're missing, I think, one seat. And let's see if we can find it. If not, we'll just leave it at this. But if we can find it, we'll fill in it. Um, I can't seem to find it. Is there any outliers? No, I think that's it. 238, 896. That can't be right. Hold on. Ninety six is the same as four hundred thirty four, and there's four hundred thirty five. So I'm missing a district, but it won't really have an impact. So I'm just gonna go um and say that the House uh, majority for the Democrats will be around the same with some pickups for them. So uh, my final projection for the House of Representatives for May what's today's May date? Today's May thirteenth. 
May 13th is 238 seats for the Democrats, 196 for the Republicans, um, essentially giving Nancy Pelosi another couple of years at the leadership. Well, I want to thank all of you for watching. Subscribe if you like the video. And if you want more content, like this video so we can get our views up. And I'm just going to start and to announce that when we reach 250 subscribers, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Um, I'm still planning the giveaway, but as soon as we hit 250 subscribers, we will have celebrations. And if you want more um, details about milestones that, that we will be celebrating as a channel, please check the community tab or the discussion tab. I think they changed the name. But again, I want to thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you real soon.